This research is just very novel right now. The big picture now is, is very much driven by the need to be more conscious about emissions or the carbon footprint of food production. Is this live stuff, Abby? Yep, this is live. Wow. It's very relevant to the industry right now because like, emissions and fertilizer reduction are kind of hot topics. We have a small plot trial set up. Um, where we are looking at measuring nitrous oxide emissions from the soil. Nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas. It is quite potent, like two to three hundred times estimated the greenhouse gas warming potential of carbon dioxide. Nitrous oxide happens regularly out of the soil, but as you're applying more nitrogen in the form of fertilizer, those emissions increase. We're hoping that we can actually demonstrate how emissions change based on fertilizer rate because right now there's a push to reduce emissions, but we don't know how to reduce emissions without reducing yield. So if you're reducing fertilizer, you reduce yield. We have a system of automated chambers set up on the plots to actually directly measure emissions. So now this one is closing and it will seal and start measuring the gases in this chamber and the gases that it collects are gonna be transported through this cable to the gas analyzer. Here is where we can see the actual measurements constantly. This is very cool. And so yeah, you can see it measuring like right now. Right now it's opening um, as the measurement is done. And so it'll take about a minute to purge the gases from these lines and then purge before the next measurement. We have three different treatments. So one is the prescribed rate of fertilizer as approved by our agronomist. And then we increased by 30% and then decreased by 30% so that we kind of have a low, medium, high treatment. That's realistic numbers. We're in the same ballpark. They're trying to get the most out of the acres they have. Due to the lack of moisture we have uh, across Western Canada, they're trying to make decisions based on, is it sustainable to add more fertilizer in their fertility plant at this time to try to gain more yield because of high commodity prices? More is not always better. So the, having this data gives them that ability to decide what they properly need to be sustainable for long-term growth. Fertilizer is a very costly input, so if farmers can fine tune the way that they utilize fertilizer and use less while still producing the same yields, it's a win-win-win situation. So here we're looking at kind of simulating variable rate fertilizer to look if that might be an option for producers to maintain their yield and just applying the right rate of fertilizer to reduce emissions. Not yet. <laughs> Get bigger chambers. <laughs> So 20 years ago, I was uh, gathering data for my PhD research actually, and that involved measuring emissions from spreading manure. So my process involved only two chambers, um, and I would have to manually deploy them and then draw gas samples out every five minutes for 15 minutes, send those gas samples away to a lab, wait three weeks to three months to get results, and then process all the data. You can literally sit in the farm shop and see what it's recording at that second. This year is really a learning year um, to kind of get some baseline measurements for the data. We've seen good data so far where the emissions are rising after a rain event, which is what we expected based on the increased soil moisture. The microbial activity that is, that is driving that nitrogen breakdown and those nitrogen transformations are dependent on so many variables. Sunlight, rainfall, temperature, like soil type, the list goes on and on and on. So the need is for more data to try to untangle all those different interacting effects. There's already models available. My guess is within five years, those models are gonna be fairly well-tuned and well-defined and be able to have farmers select you know, their specific growing conditions, their field types, and the types of practices they currently deploy versus the ones they're thinking of deploying. And it'll give them a pretty reasonable estimate on the, the change in their carbon footprint based on, based on all the data that's being collected across Western Canada. Just like where I was 20 years ago, imagine where we, where we can be 20 years from now with this added capacity building and, and knowledge generation. Okay.